All right, so today we're going to learn more about Adolf Brand. Uh, he was a German, lived in the early 20th century, and he believed very much the same things that I've written in Grero. Uh, so it's very interesting to read about people who were around 100 years ago who believed similar things. Uh, I'm going to read from a book called Homosexuality and Male Bonding in Pre-Nazi Germany. They have a short little, uh, auto, uh, not auto, but they just have a short little biography of him. Uh, so we'll read that, and then we'll take a look at a very interesting newspaper article from Spokane, uh, the Spokane Press from 1907. Uh, that's him right there. There's a little article here, and uh, that's it. So uh, the newspaper, uh, I'll link to it. The stuff that I'm reading, I'll link to that as well. I'll upload it as a PDF. So here we go. Adolf Brand's career as a gay activist, 1896 to 1933. Now, gay, will come back to that as well, because that's an interesting as to why he'd be called gay. The publisher Adolf Brand was one of the most controversial activists in the gay movement. After abandoning his prof profession as teacher because of his anarchistic opinions and his associations with bohemians and free thinkers in Fin de Sick, uh, Berlin, he started a bookshop and publishing firm and began publishing the journal Der Eigene, which appeared from 1896 until 1931 in different forms and with changing frequencies. The first issues of Der Eigene were characterized by a particularly particular kind of anarchism formulated 50 years earlier by the philosopher Max Stirner. Brand borrowed the title of his journal from Stirner's main work, Der Einzige und Sein Eigentum, the unique one in his property which strongly uh, rejected any subordination of individuality, not only to the ecclesiastical and temporal authorities, but also to morals, rationalism, and ideology. At the end of 1890, Der Eigene changed from an anarchist into a literary and artistic homosexual journal. Its readers, as Brand declared, would be men who thirst for a revival of Greek times and Hellenic standards of beauty after centuries of Christian barbarism. After having discontinued the publication of Der Eigene for three years due to lack of money, Brand edited it again in 1903 as a journal for male culture, art, and literature. In Der Eigene, contribu uh, contributions alternated between somewhat sentimental love poems and short stories and essays on social, political, and aesthetic aspects of manner, manner und Jungliche love among men and youths. Brand connected his defense of male eroticism to his anarchism, which to him required complete self-determination over mind and body. His bitter attacks were directed not only against government authorities and Christian moralizers, but also against physicians and psychiatrists whose scientific research on human sexuality, Brand maintained, took away all beauty from eroticism. In this way, he took his first stand against Hirschfeld, whom uh, he had met in 1896 when they planned together a political campaign for the abolition of paragraph 170, uh, 175, which was a, a, a statue in Germany that criminalized same-sex sex. For a short time, Brand supported Hirschfeld's committee, but very soon he and other writers in Der Eigene gave voice to their dislike of sexologists like, uh, such as Hirschfeld. Uh, Brand's frequent use of abusive language in his writing showed his militant and somewhat quick-tempered character. He did not mince words. Many times he got mixed up in public quarrels, scandals, and trials. In 1899, he caused a sensation in German in the German parliament by striking a member of the Reichstag with a dog whip. In 1903, he had to stop publishing Der Eigene for a while because of a moral purification group accused him of distributing lascivious writings. Pictures of nude boys by the famous photographer Wilhelm uh, von Gloden and the well-known painter Fetus uh, Hugo Hoppener were considered to be especially offensive, but also some prose and even a reprint of Friedrich Schiller's poem, uh, Die Friend, uh, Freundenschaft, uh, Friendship, were designated as immoral. Brand was sentenced to prison for two months on immorality charges. Even in the more liberal Weimar Republic, Brand had to put up with police searches of his house and, uh, and with trials because of, his, because of his photographs of nude young men, which he published in, a, in special magazines with titles such as Blatter, uh, for Nekultur, Journal for Nudism, Race and Beauty, and German Race. Sometimes he managed to defend himself by arguing that his motivation was not sexual, but artistic and scientific, and that showing male nudity was in the interest, interest of racial health and purity. <laughs> oh. 
It comes as no surprise that Brand had to be very cautious in distributing his journals. Subscribers were requested to sign a declaration promising not to be shocked by the literature and pictures, especially as Brand couched it in guarded words, unconcealed depictions of the human body which evoke shame in so many average people. Uh, well, it's true today as well, I suppose. To gain moral and financial support for his activities, Brand and a few of his friends in 1903 founded a society for friendship and freedom, the Geiman Chef der Eigenen. Among those who signed uh, the constitution of the society were some of the pr uh, prominent men, uh, were some prominent men. The philosopher and biologist Benedict Friedlander, who was also on the board of Hirschfeld's committee, the renowned classical scholar Paul Brandt, who wrote a history of sexual morals in ancient Greece under the pen name Hans Licht, Wilhelm Jansen, a rich landowner and respected leader in the van der Vogel youth movement, and the then well-known poet Peter Hill, and Dutch physician Lucien von Romer. Information on most of the members of the Geiman Chef is scarce, however. The names and number were known only to Brand, who was the sole administrator. Probably there were never more than about 1,500 subscribers to Der Eigene, who, by subscribing, became members of the society. The contributors to Der Eigene were, for the most part, literary men. Some of them were talented and, uh, and were known at the time, but most of them were of minor importance and only known in small circles. The Geimenschef der Eigenen was not a political organization, and even less, Brand emphasized, a society for mere amusement. It was, in fact, more a literary circle comparable, Brand explained, to a Masonic lodge or the classical symposium. Women, women were explicitly excluded. At the weekly gatherings at Brand's house in the Berlin suburb of Wilhelmshagen, poems and prose pieces were recited and issues concerning male homosexuality discussed. Beyond these private meetings, Brand sometimes organized public lectures in the city of Berlin and also excursions into the countryside. In the 20s, he planned to establish a Lichtluft Sportbad, sun air sport bath, in the tr tradition of the German nudist movement, of which he and other members of the Geiman Chef were advocates. He also tried to establish an idyllic vacation resort in an old castle or monastery. Both projects were not realized because of a lack of financial support. Members of the Gaiman Chef were entitled to support and advice if they, as homosexuals, got in trouble, for example, by being blackmailed. At the same time, they had an opportunity to find a lover by means of a personal ad in Der Eigene or in one of the other journals through which Brand informed them of his activities, including the weekly report, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, and an occasional supplement, yes. Uh, in 1907, Brand's name appeared in the national and foreign press, uh, including the printout, uh, national and foreign press, because of his involvement in the sensational hardened Eulenburg scandal. This affair was one of the many homosexual scandals around the turn of the century in Germany, in which high-ranking men, especially army officers, were involved. Army officers, just like in the ancient uh, Greco-Roman world. Uh, in 1902, the Social Democratic paper Verwarts, trying to pillory the Kaiser's policy of armament, wrote, the, wrote that the rich steel baron F. Alfred Krupp was indulged in homosexual vice in his country seat on Capri, suggesting that this proved the moral decadence of the capitalist class. Uh, it's interesting, just as a little note, uh, when Stalin came to power, the exact opposite was... Uh, uh, hold on. No, no, when Stalin came to power, he used the same line that, uh, you know, this is capitalist nonsense. Of course, in the West, uh, this was, uh, homosexuality was looked upon as a socialist vice that, oh, it's those Bolsheviks who do it. So the Nazi party said, oh, the Bolsheviks are in these gay orgies and all that. Uh, this was used also in, in, um, in less fascistic uh, political circles as well. Uh, so let's see here. Four years later, the nationalist journalist Maximilian Hardin started a campaign against two close friends and political advisors of Kaiser Wilhelm II, Prince Philip zu Eulenburg-Hertevelt and Count uh, Kuno von Moltke. These two noblemen were at the center of the so-called Liebenberg Circle, or Liebenberg Circle, whose members cultivated romantic friendships and in which Wilhelm II was often a guest. In one of his articles in his weekly Die Zukunft, Hardin hinted that they were homosexuals. Like that of Verwarts, Hardin's motivation was political. His aim was to obstruct the influence of the pro-French 
Leibenberg Circle on the Kaiser in foreign policy, but when Molt charged Hardin with slander, judicial and public attention was directed to the alleged homosexuality of the two noblemen. Brand meddled in the affair by writing a pamphlet in which he maintained that the Prime Minister, Bernhard van Beulah, 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 I, I don't know because I don't know how to pronounce it right, uh, who resented Eulenburg's pacifist influence on the Kaiser was the instigator of Hardin's accusations, an assertion which was not without truth. Moreover, Brand charged Bulow with hypocrisy because he asserted the Reich Consular himself was having a homosexual relationship with one of his assistants. Bulow sued Brand for libel. Brand was convicted by the court and sentenced to prison for a term of 18 months. He was, in fact, the only one who was actually imprisoned as a result of the scandal, and this strengthened his role as a martyr for the cause of homosexual emancipation. Brand's behavior can be explained in two ways. First, he admired Eulenburg and wanted to defend him. During some of the trials, the prince declared that he had deep bonds with men and considered his capacity for friendship as one of the finest German virtues. Second and more important, Brand, as some other gay activists somewhat naively believed, was convinced that the disclosure of homosexual relationships among high-ranking men would not only make people aware of class injustice, but would also eventually bring about the abolition of paragraph 175. He had opted for, uh, for this strategy of the path over corpses a few years earlier by publishing a pamphlet in which he revealed that the leading politician of the Catholic Center Party, Kaplan Dashbach, was sexually attracted to males. Oh, by the way, uh, um, Adolf Brand then means that he was the first person to use outing as a political weapon Okay, uh, in the early 1900s. Brand expected Hirschfeld and his committee to support him in this policy, but they repudiated it. Ah, those gays who are like, we don't want to do that, it's too scary. Indeed, they criticized him for embarking on such an extremist course. Oh, yes, when you don't agree with something, you can just shout extremist at it, yes. Brand never forgave Hirschfeld for withholding support and, to a certain extent, even held him responsible for his imprisonment. While Hirschfeld had supported Hardin in one of the trials by testifying as an expert witness and stating that Moltke was a homosexual in a psychological sense, he would not do the same thing for Brand in his case against Bula. After having served his prison sentence, Brand immediately distributed another brochure in which Hirschfeld was accused of having played an evil part, part in the conspiracy against Eulenburg. Hirschfeld the brochure claimed had betrayed the homosexual movement by frustrating a plan to embarrass the police authorities and the government by means of a massive public admission of homosexuality by prominent men, thus making paragraph 175 unenforceable. After the First World War, Brand and Hirschfeld settled their differences for some time. Both welcomed the democratic Weimar Republic and in the atmosphere of optimism, Brand cooperated with the leaders of the committee to prepare a new campaign for the abolition of paragraph 175. The circulation and frequency of Der Eigene was greater than ever, and Brand's 50th birthday was celebrated in Hirschfeld's Institute for Sexual Schwissfrock. I have no idea on which occasion Hirschfeld praised, not without a touch of irony, Brand's fighting spirit. However, their reconciliation did not last. In 1925, he published a small book in which Ewald Tretchesk, a regular contributor to Der Eigen in the 20s, explained that, science, explained that the Scientific Humanitarian Committee should be fought since its activities were harmful to the German people. The same Chesks ridiculed Hirschfeld and his assistants in Brand's satirical magazine, Die Tant, The Fairy. Also in, the, also in Der Eigen, several comic pieces appeared in which Dr. Feldhirsch was uh, held up to derision. Uh, and we'll continue the last couple paragraphs in the next video.